Welcome to part one of this short series to help match Blackmagic 6K Pro and Blackmagic Video Assist footage using the S5 and S5 2X. I received a lot of requests to show how to match footage from the Video Assist using the S5 and the Blackmagic 6K Pro. I'll be sharing footage from the S5 2X and the S5 with the 6K Pro since there are a few important differences to discuss. This video explains how to match the camera settings between the two cameras while the next video explains how to color correct and color grade this footage. There's a lot of great information to get through, so let's jump right in. I don't have a lot of scenes in my short film where I need both cameras filming simultaneously, but I do have unique situations where each camera's strength helps. And in both of those situations, my goal is to still match the footage as much as possible so the style can be finalized in post. If you're trying to match the style as close as possible, then the first step is to get your settings for the cameras to match. And then the second step is to match the color grade in DaVinci Resolve since we're using B-RAW. Before we jump through the first checklist for matching camera settings, let's see a few quick side-by-side -side shots to see if you can guess which one is the 6K Pro and which one is the video assist using the S5. Okay, on to the settings checklist. Let's start with the easy items first. Match frames per second. We're using 23.98, even though the 6K Pro can do true 24 frames per second, just like the S5 2X. Match shutter speed. We're using a shutter angle of 180 degrees. Both the S5 2X and the 6K Pro can change the shutter angle one degree at a time. The S5 2X just needs the synchro scan turned on to enable it. Match lenses. The 6K Pro is a Super 35 sensor, so make sure to convert your lenses by dividing the 6K's crop factor of 1.558 by the S5's full frame lens. So in this case, I have a 50mm on the S5 and an 18 to 35 Sigma art lens will need to be at 32mm for an equivalent field of view. The 6K Pro has a handy feature to see the exact zoom millimeter of the Sigma lens so I can make sure that I'm getting exactly what I want. Just swipe left or right on the screen, then select Lens Data and Adjust. Match F-Stop. The ratio for calculating F-Stop for full frame to the Super 35 on the 6K Pro is the same. We are going to divide the F-Stop value from the full frame by 1.558 to get the setting for the Super 35 lens on the 6K Pro. So if I have F3 set on the 50mm full frame on the S5, then it will be F1.8 on the Sigma APS-C lens. So yes, you can get the same depth of field as a full frame sensor on an APS-C sensor but the advantage is still given to the full frame sensor in lower light situations to get a deeper depth of field. Match white balance. I set both cameras to 4000 for this example. Quick note about white balance on the video assist. This is the software revision that Blackmagic released an update to fix the white balance as some had complained about it in the past. It seems fixed as Gerald Undone's review of the S5 2X shared that the white balance adjustments were almost perfect. I didn't do any separate tests for the S5 to see if it was fixed too, but I'm confident that it was in this software update. Match log. Technically, you can't match log in this case, but you can make sure they are both in their highest dynamic range log settings. For the 6K Pro set to film, and for the S5, you're already stuck on V-Log by default when using the external HDMI. Match B-RAW settings. I'm just going to film an 8 to 1 for this experiment, but for the film, I'll use 5 to 1. Match aspect ratio. 
If I'm using 5.9K on the Video Assist and 6K on the 6K Pro, then the 6K Pro has 6144 by 3456, which is a 16 to 9 ratio. And the S5 or S52X in the Video Assist, also 16 to 9. So we're good. Check. If you want to match the lens size and use the APS-C crop on the S5, then you're stuck with 4.1K, which isn't too bad. But then the aspect ratio changes to 17 to 9 using pixels 4128 by 2176. Match exposure. There are a few methods to choose from, but my absolute favorite is to use the zebras to find middle gray as quickly as possible. Then use false color to see if the main subject in the scene is exposed correctly. There will be times when I'm above or below middle gray because the most important part of the scene needs to be exposed regardless if a part of the sky is blown out or a piece of the background is lost. Set your 6K Pro ISO to 400 minimum to start. Never use any ISO setting below 400 or you will lose a massive amount of highlights. It's weird but true. Definitely experiment to see the results for yourself. Now let's set up the zebras. There's no light meter built into the 6K Pro like the S5, but in the zebra setting, just slide the bar all the way to the left and you'll find something magical. MG. This is middle gray. Now if I walk out to a scene with the zebras on, you can quickly adjust exposure to middle gray. Next, I turn on false color and verify that the subject is also exposed correctly. That's all good, on to the S5. On your S5, set the ISO to 640 to start. Usually Vlog has this set as a default minimum already. The Video Assist does not have the magical middle gray setting on the Zebra, sadly, but the S5, however, does. Set up your Zebras by selecting the gear icon, then the fifth icon down, select Zebra Pattern, select Set, select Zebra 1, then Base Range, select Base Level 0 Stop, then select Zebra 1 to activate. Since you're using the HDMI feature, then Vlog is default on the color style, which enables the stop feature for the luminant spot meter instead of a percentage. So by setting your base level to zero, this is the same thing as 42 IRE or middle gray. Now if you want to assign the zebra like I did to the front button, then select the gear icon, third icon down, select FN button setup, go to page two, Select FN2, select List2, six icons down, select Zebra Pattern, select Zebra 1. Match LUTs. I'm just going to use the Vlog to 709 LUT on the Video Assist, and for the 6K Pro, I'm just going to export a custom 709 LUT from DaVinci using Color Space Transform and import that. Thankfully, DaVinci Resolve makes it fairly easy to create your own LUT and import it into the camera if you want to experiment with different looks while filming. In project settings, I have Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 for timeline color space and output color space. Then in the color space transform node for input color space, select Black Magic Design Wide Gamut Gen 4.5 and input gamma is Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5, while using the timeline for the output color space and output gamma, which was the 709 project settings I just showed you earlier. And yes, the timeline settings are set to project settings. Then just right-click the clip with the CST node, select Generate LUT, select 33 point cube, name it and save it on an SD card, then load the SD card into your 6K Pro, select LUTs, Select the double arrow on the bottom, select Import LUT, SD for SD card, and then select the LUT you want to import. After it is imported, just select it in the menu and click the check mark and you're done. And now for the big step to save you a ton of time in the future. Now that you have all these settings applied, just save them so you can recall them whenever you want. For the 6K Pro, select upper right icon, preset, select the plus sign, enter a name, Select Update. Now you can come back and select the name, select the check mark, and you're ready to go. The Video Assist sadly doesn't allow you to save custom settings yet, but seems to hold your last settings fairly well. For the S5, select the wrench icon, fourth icon down, save to custom mode, select your preference of custom mode. Quick note on saving custom mode 3 or C3, 
When you save on any of the C3 settings, it will add the C to the menu so you can select one, two, or three and not on the dial. So use the C3 setting first by selecting it on the dial, then open the menu and select your preference. If you want to learn more about the rest of the video settings for these cameras, then the S5 video settings, the S52X video settings, the Video Assist video settings, and the 6K Pro are all listed in the description below. The next video in the series is about color correction and is located here. There is so much great information in the next video, I share a lot of shortcuts. Please leave any comments below and I'll see you for the continuation of this short series in a moment. See you there. Oh, 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 oh,